Hi there, Joey from dayjobhacks.com. Today I'm gonna to talk about 10 commandments to getting higher conversion rates and lower cost per acquisition. Now I've been an affiliate since 2002. If you don't know that already, in 2015, I quit two jobs and started doing this full time online. And the only reason why I was able to do that is because I finally figured out how to convert people into customers, how to get people to do things online that makes me revenue, okay? So there is no magic formula here. I'm just gonna talk about the 10 commandments, the things I do to increase my conversion rate, ultimately making me more money, okay? Now, higher conversion rates don't always mean more money, doesn't always mean profits for all of the, the gurus out there that are really big on numbers, I get it, but these tips will help get conversions. And a lot of people that watch my channel are really new to the game and they don't know even how to get their first conversion. So I'm gonna talk about this now. So number one is know thy customer, okay? I've done a video on this already, so I'm not going to ramble on about it, so just check it out. I will pop it up above, and I basically talk about choosing your customer avatar. Very important to know their pain points, what kind of value propositions you can pitch to them, and what kind of angles they will respond to as you're creating your marketing messages, okay? So very important, number one, watch the video. Number two is know thy offer. Whether you're an affiliate or a product owner, it's very important to know what action you want people to do in order to get that conversion that you need in order to make revenue, okay? So for example, a lot of people starting out on affiliate marketing think it's a great idea to go into email submit offers because all you have to do is get somebody to enter their email and you get paid a conversion, okay? Sometimes it's very attractive and yes, they can be easy to convert, but sometimes you make more money by converting other types of offers. So the point here is you need to know exactly when the conversion happens and how much money you're going to make at that conversion point. Now a lot of networks out there, affiliate networks in particular, will say something is a single opt-in offer, but in fact, they have to go through multiple hoops in order for you to get a conversion. For example, some lead offers say first page submit gives you a conversion, but really it's after five pages of submissions that you get the conversion. Um, some places say free trial and you get a conversion, but in fact, the person has to pay $5 before you get a conversion. So understand where the pixel fires to give you that conversion because it's gonna be extremely important to know that when we start creating our calls to action. Number three, honor thy traffic source. Extremely important, especially if you're on Facebook, Google, Pinterest, Twitter, Bing, all of these mainstream traffic sources have rules and if you cross the line, you're going to lose your account. However, to get high conversion rates and lower CPMs, we have to, we almost have to really test that line and go almost over it a little bit in order to get really good conversion rates. So you have to know the rules of your traffic source and make sure you don't cross the line, okay? Especially if you're just starting out, you could lose your account immediately. Number four is use a landing page, but it's using the right type of landing page. Oftentimes, people make the mistake of using the wrong type of landing page for the type of offer you're running. Many offers cater well to better landing pages and many traffic sources cater well to, to certain types of landing pages, okay? For example, I've done a video on advertorials. I'll pop that up. I've also done a video on listicles, and those listicles work better with certain types of offers. Okay, so listicles work well with e-commerce offers, so like 17 gadgets that every person needs, or they also work well with finance offers, like 10 ways to save money on your home, and then you have a list of 10 different programs that they can sign up for to save money. Advertorials work really well with uh, trial offers, so it's like diet especially, or muscle or skincare, these types of offer, these types of advertorials are great because they're news style and they make it look like something is actually happening in the world and, they, and people are interested in learning what's the newest trend, okay? So they work well with those types of offers. So make sure you understand the difference between what kind of landing page you're going to use and the types of offers you're running. Another trick is to make sure that you understand the offer itself. For example, if you're running a ClickBank offer, it is a full sales form offer usually, and it's a long sales copy. So if you're sending traffic to that, you don't wanna have a long sales copy before another long sales copy. Maybe you wanna pre-sell. So a quick hit pre-sell would be like a headline, few good points about the product, a call to action, and then send them to the, pre the full form sales copy. If you're sending someone to a trial offer, which is already basically a checkout page where they enter their name, 
um, and their address and they click send me my trial, then you're gonna do a sales form type of landing page, okay? Now we can get into lead pages and all that stuff, but I'm not gonna bother wasting your time too much there. Just understand you need to match your landing page with your offer. Number five is to test multiple marketing angles. Now I've done a complete video on marketing angles, so again, I'm not gonna waste your time. Just check out the video above and we'll talk about marketing angles in that video. Basically, it's the story you tell on your landing page. Test multiple different stories because multiple different stories work with multiple different people. Some people would respond to a better story about something else, and so all of this really matters when it comes to creating your marketing messages. Again, not gonna ramble on about that. Number six is to have a strong and clear call to action in every single part of your marketing funnel. For example, first you're going to create the first ad, okay? So for paid traffic especially, you're going to create an ad. That ad needs to have a clear call to action. You want people to click here to read more or click here to get a quote. Whatever it is, you're getting people to go to the next page and you need to make sure your page matches with that call to action. So if I'm saying click here to read more in my ad, when they land on my landing page, they need to be able to read more. At this point, I'm going to have another call to action that is strong and clear, that is going to get people to go to the offer and do something on that page. So what I'll usually do is look at the call to action on the offer page that I'm pitching, make sure I understand what their call to action is, and I wanna make sure my call to action is similar and uh, kind of like the next step in the funnel. So basically you're creating a little uh, baby steps funnel from people from the ad to the landing page to the offer and ultimately to the conversion point, okay? So you need to make sure each call to action matches, everything is congruent and everything flows easily. Number seven is test and track everything. There are so many components to this that it's very important, but what I recommend first is choosing one traffic source, understand the rules, don't test multiple different traffic sources. Start by testing your ad copies, your targeting, your landing page, test multiple offers if you're an affiliate, if you're a product owner, maybe test multiple different versions of your offer or multiple different versions of your checkout page to make sure you're testing everything. Everything needs to be tracked, so use, use things like Google uh, Analytics, use third-party tracking like CPV Lab Pro, BMob, Volume, um, so many different ones out there. There's Funnel Flux, Thrive Tracker, all of these work. They're all third-party tracking platforms that allow you to test where people drop off on your funnel or in your funnel. Number eight is social proof. Very important. Um, it's good to have it in your ads if you're running Facebook, especially if I find an ad's doing extremely well and has a lot of likes and a lot of comments, and a lot of shares, I'm gonna copy that ad ID um, and I'm gonna put it into a new ad and maybe test different um, targeting. So a different ad set using the same post that has all of that social proof. If you cannot do that because you're running on a different traffic source, make sure you put social proof on your landing page and allow people to share your landing page. So if you're using WordPress like I do for most of my landing pages, I will have a plugin that allows people to share and it also shows how many people have shared it. I will also have comments below. So I, whether uh, you can find some real comments about your product that you can put on there, there's testimonials you should have on there as well, but the social proof is important to show people that other people are also enjoying this product and it is solving their problems as well. Number nine is test multiple different ad formats, especially on places like Facebook and Google. For example, on Google Display Network, if you do not put multiple different sized graphics or multiple sized um, banners, your placements will not hit every single website out there. It's extremely important if you're using automated bidding, which I'm gonna talk about here in a second, but you should also be testing videos, text ads, different sized images, different sized videos on both Facebook and Google because this will allow their platforms to put your ads in front of everyone. Especially on Facebook when you're thinking about there's the marketplace ads, there's the feed ads, there are you know Instagram ads, stories, audience network, all of these places have different sized images so you wanna make sure that you have multiple different sizes, especially once we get into the next one which is 
auto bidding. I use auto bidding on most of my campaigns. That's how I save a ton of time every week, but you can only use it after you get so many conversions at first. In order to get lots of conversions, you need to test multiple different ads. Once you turn on the automated bidding, for example, if you go into Facebook and you set up a campaign, many of my campaigns are set up with the conversion objective, and I want Facebook to deliver my ads to the people that are most likely to convert. You need to use the pixel from your traffic source in order to do this. Many different traffic sources have pixels available. There are pixels on Google. You can use the Facebook pixel. There's the Snapchat pixel. Everywhere you go, there's Taboola. They have a pixel. Rev Content has a pixel. All of these places allow you to um, basically tell the ad networks where your conversions are happening so that they can start showing your ads to more relevant people. On Google, for example, you can start setting up your campaigns for target CPA. So if I want to have conversions come in at $15, I can tell Google, look, here's a bunch of people that converted before. I want you to show my ads to people that will likely come in at a $15 target CPA at which point Google will take that data and start doing all of the work for me. Very important in order to reduce your cost per action and increase your conversion rates is to allow the platforms to do the work for you. Now, if you like that type of video, please comment below, like, whatever it is. Please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you in the next videos. And if you have anything else you wanna to add to this, please add it down below. Thanks a lot. So the trick here is I'm gonna show, so there is no magic formula here. I'm just gonna sales copy. Um. <laughs>